the captain's going to show up, Lynch. Oh, he'll show up, all right. Got any dots? Look. Captain! Howdy, Captain. It's been a long time since we all been together again. Here, have a seat. One more drink for the Captain. Captain? Gentlemen? I reckon it surprised you some getting a letter from me, huh? It surprised me that you know how to write. <laughs> now, where's that field report that Major Hawley wrote concerning Colonel Cloud's death? That's right here, sir. Right here. Looks authentic. You can bet on that. I took it off the Major just after he went good himself shot. Poor fella dying like that before he had a chance to deliver it. Yeah, the funny thing is, I forgot I even had it till I saw that book the Colonel's widow wrote about him being such a hero. It was then it came to me. Maybe the Colonel's widow would pay a lot of money just to keep him a hero. Well, that's where you're wrong. I know the lady. She might be shocked to learn how he really died, but she would see all of you hang before she'd agree to pay any blackmail. Oh, I don't think we're going to have any problems with you acting as a go-between, Captain. Especially with you being such a well-respected man in the community. She'd see me hang, too. Captain, you disappoint me. you got no way of knowing just what she's going to do. Look, we go into a lot of trouble. We rode a long way. We aim to get paid. I reckon you just better go ahead and give it a try. Will you let me finish? When I got your letter, I started thinking, and I have a better idea. Keep talking, Captain. I don't care how you do it as long as we get paid. Two days from now, the Colonel's body is being shipped to Philadelphia, to Lion State in a national shrine. Because I served under him, I've been chosen to escort the body. <laughs> That's real touching. What are you getting at? Well, now, if the body were to get... Uh, Lost along the way, I'm sure the family would be glad to pay for its return. You, uh... You mean suggesting we kidnap a corpse? <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't offend your sensibilities. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that couldn't offend us. I think that's a real good joke on the girl. <laughs> I'd sure hate to see him rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday when you were just a little bitty tank hanging on to your mother's skirts and now here you are all grown up and on your way to a school for young gentlemen in philadelphia that's becky's idea she figured it was time he was exposed to civilization well offhand i'd say he isn't too happy about it well i wouldn't exactly call him overjoyed about having to wear that suit it's a sissy suit oh i wouldn't say that I think you look real fine in it. And it's a sissy school. There ain't anything else I need to learn. Well, now, Israel, I think you've already lost that argument to your mother. You might as well make up your mind to that. I ain't gonna like it, and I ain't gonna like any of the sissies that go to it. I'll bet on that. But you know, that feeling will all go away. 
Why, I can remember when I first left home. Bet you can remember too, Daniel. Yep, I can remember. I don't know who it's harder on when it's time to go. The parents or the children. You know, I'm surprised you didn't bring Becky along. Long trip. I had some business with Ben Franklin in Philadelphia, so I got elected. Well, it's been nice talking to you, Daniel. If you'll excuse me now, I'll go and get your luggage taken out. That coach will be here any minute now. But don't you hurry your meal. I'll call you when it's time to go. Thank you, Luther. General, you better drink some of that milk. It's going to be a long time before we get there. like you've gone in the undertaking business, Gabe. Looks that way. Somebody from around here? You know, got on board late yesterday to Haleyville, going all the way to Philadelphia. Well, at least you've got cool weather for the trip. How long do we stop here, driver? As long as it takes me to load this luggage. Ah, uh, well, there's no point in my getting out. How many passengers you got for me? Uh, just two, Daniel Boone and Israel. They're bound for Philadelphia, too. Uh, Daniel, that'll be a pleasure. Daniel, coach is here. Here we go. Oh, good morning, young man. Since we're traveling together, let me introduce myself. I know that you're Mr. Boone. My name is Harris. Logan Harris. Glad to know you, Mr. Harris. This is my son, Israel. It's my pleasure, Israel. Glad to have your company. It's a dull trip traveling alone. Have a good trip, Gabe. sure are a welcome sight. I've been walking this lonely road all day, just hoping and waiting for somebody to come along. What happened? Uh, no cause for alarm, mister. My horse broke a leg last night and put me afoot. Now, if you could tote me to the nearest settlement, I'd not only be obliged, I got money to pay. Sure would like to accommodate you, mister. But there ain't space inside for you in a saddle. No, 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 no. We can't leave the man stranded here. We'll make room for him. Well, thank you, sir, but I wouldn't want to put you out. Uh, if it's all right, I'll ride on the boot with you. It's all right on me, mister. Toss your saddle up here and climb on. Ah, uh, thanks. I mean to get to Horton's Ferry before dark. Uh, this is mighty kind of you. Get up. Sure picked a lonely section to get set afoot. Wasn't me picked it. Go fate. I sure want to thank you for stopping. Most drivers wouldn't. Highwaymen been known to hold up coaches long here. Is that a fact? Yeah, in broad open daylight, too. Then I am fortunate you stopped. You're real fortunate you didn't try to hold me up. You might not know it, but I had a gun on you. Underneath my coat. Now, you may not know it, but I got a gun on you right now. And it ain't underneath my coat. <laughs> All right, mister, what do you want? Your gun. Thank you. There's an old road forking to the right, about half mile up ahead. 
That's where we turn up. What's that Gabe think he's doing? He's following orders, Mr. Boone. And I would suggest that you do the same. I can hardly miss at this distance. It would be difficult. What is this, a holdup? Not in the accepted sense of the word. It's a technicality. In one case, you get robbed. In this case, you don't. What happens in this case? Do I get shot? No, not if you don't cause me any trouble. Under the circumstances, you're looking at the most peace-loving individual you could run across. And why don't you lower that blunderbuss? If we hit a bump, it could go off. I'm glad to see you have a sense of humor, Mr. Bone. I don't know how much of a sense of humor I have, but I sure know when I'm outnumbered. Pa, have you been understanding what he's talking about? Well, not completely. But I do understand that gun. Why don't you just keep on looking out the window at the scenery and try to enjoy it? again. Now that makes $40 I got coming. I ought to know better than to play cards with you, with your deck of cards. Any sign of them yet? Nothing, nothing. You know, I don't like it. What don't you like? If nothing went wrong, that coach should have been here by this time. Now you, you heard me tell Lynch not to try to take that coach alone. He ain't alone. You forget. Captain's traveling with the dear departed. Yeah, but what good can he do inside the coach? Now, I still say we all should have been there. And I still say Lynch was right. Now, look, that coach is going to stop for one man walking, but it ain't about to stop for any more. Four men on horseback could have stopped it. Well, that's right. And wound up with somebody getting killed. Now, look, right now, none of us is in trouble. I'd just as soon it stayed that way. Well, I still say... Listen. Here she comes. Come on. Ross, stay here. We'll find out if everything's all right. Right. Down from there. Lynch, take the coach around back and stable the horses. Yes, sir. Hey! Now, oh, Mr. Boone, would you please step inside? Captain, we were going to get worried, Frost. Look like you're planning on staying here very long. Only until morning, if everything goes well. Captain, should we tie him up? Oh, you might tie the driver. I don't think Mr. Boone would jeopardize the safety of his son. I wouldn't do anything to cause harm to that boy. That's right. Gabe's an old friend. He wouldn't do anything to put Israel in danger any more than I would. Very well, I'll take your word for it. Make yourselves comfortable, gentlemen. We won't be doing anything till it gets dark. Light a fire, Timbo. Yes, sir.
Give me one. That's good. You know, Daniel, the more I think about it, the less sense it makes. Why do you bother to hold up that stage? What are we waiting for? Do you have anything of value on this trip, Gabe? Nope. All this carrying is your luggage and that corpse. The corpse? Maybe that was it. You mean you think they'd bother stealing a cadaver? It's been done. A man that had sink that low wouldn't stop at committing. Go ahead and say it, Gabe. As well just sleep. Well, you know what I mean anyway. <laughs> Come on, deal him again. I reckon nobody's missed that coach yet. Else we'd had visitors for it. Why should anybody miss it? Wasn't due at the next stop till dark. Yeah, ain't too long till dark now. You think they'll come looking for us then? No, not before morning. We'll be gone shortly after that. Go tell Mr. Boone I want to talk to him. Well, what do you want him for? He's going to collect the ransom for us. Uh, I've been meaning to talk to you about that, Captain. Just where is the money and how do we go about getting it? <laughs> now, if I were to tell you that, Lynch, you'd probably shoot me in the back and try to get it for yourself, wouldn't you? Captain, you sound like you don't trust me. I don't. Now go and get him. You do trust him, huh? As long as we have his boy. I don't know. You can still figure some way to double-cross us. No, I'm sure Boone is much too intelligent for that. Now go and bring him out here, please. Yes, sir, Captain, sir. Captain wants to talk to you. About anything in particular? Mr. Boone, why don't you ask him? He's right outside. After his roof, he wakes up game. You want to see me about something? Yes, a little uh, conversation. You can go now, Lynch. If I was all the same to you, Captain, I'll stay around. No, you won't. Go on back inside. Captain, you just don't have any faith in me, do you? And I ain't sure I got much in you. Well, that's unfortunate, because right now you don't have any choice. Yeah. Sit down, Mr. Boone. Perhaps you'd care to join me in a drink. No, thank you. If you wish. However, there's no reason you can't be seated. Take it your friends don't care too much for you. My friends? Whatever else you want to call them. It is my misfortune, Mr. Boone, to find myself in league with men such as those, and I suppose you're wondering why. I've got my share of curiosity. Well, maybe you remember the old slogan about uh, war making strange bedfellows? Mr. Harris, the war has been over for some time. Not for me, it hasn't. But with a little luck. It might end sometime tomorrow. Now, what do you got? Your deal. What are those two palavering about out there? I ain't real sure. Then why don't you stay with them and find out? Captain told me to leave. We ain't in the Army no more. How come he thinks he can give us orders? Because we ain't got that ransom yet. That's how come. Maybe it's about time we took a hand in this. You sit down, Timbo. Don't you know the Captain ain't going to tell us nothing? Until we get that money, we're going to have to let him play soldier. 
All I want to know is where that ransom is and who's going to pick it up. That's what I want to know. Well, he's sending Boone after it. I don't know where. So we'll just sit and we'll wait. Deal me in. You still haven't told me why you called me out here. No. You see, I've been wondering just how far I could trust you. Why should you trust me at all? Because I need your help. You kidnapped me and my son, and you asked me for my help? So I'll admit it's a peculiar request, but then this is a peculiar situation. It was a mischance that you were on that coach, but there's no help for that now. However, it does entitle you to an explanation. Have you ever heard of a Colonel Martin Vincent Cloud? Some sort of war hero, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. That's the way the Army's record reads. In an engagement along the Saluda River with the enemy, Colonel Cloud, with a mere handful of men, fought an heroic rearguard action which enabled his regiment not only to escape a British ambush, but turn what seemed to be a defeat into a decisive victory. There's more to it, but I won't bore you with that. You seem to know the record pretty well. I ought to. I'm the one who wrote it. The only trouble is there's not a word of truth in it. The truth, Mr. Boone, is that Colonel Cloud was a glory hunter, a drunk, and a coward. I served under him, so did Lynch and Timbo and those other two men. There were five of us left when he was killed, and the British did not shoot him, Mr. Boone. He killed himself on the field of battle after getting most of his command completely annihilated. Well, why did you falsify the record? Respect. Respect for his family. It didn't seem very important at the time. A few words and a piece of paper. The only trouble is that the colonel's widow wrote a book about it. And Lynch got a hold of that book. And he also has the field report written by the colonel's adjutant, Major Hawley, who was also killed. And uh, Mrs. Cloud is a very wealthy woman. So you threw in with them to blackmail her? Blackmail's an ugly business, Mr. Boone, and very dangerous. Body snatching is easier. I already figured that out. How much are you asking for the body? $20,000. I reckon I don't have to tell you what I think of a man who'd rob a grave. No, I reckon you don't. But at least now you know why we're waiting. Uh, there is just the one more thing. You're going to collect the ransom. Well, then that's where you're wrong. I've done a lot of things in my time, but I've never sold a corpse, and I don't aim to start now. Well, unfortunately, you don't have any choice, and neither do I. I had planned to go after that money myself, but if I leave here now, I doubt very much whether you, your son, or your friend Gabe would be alive when I get back. Suppose I run your errand for you. What'll happen after I get back? I'll tell you very frankly that I don't know. That depends largely on you. Well, you know what you're asking me to do, don't you? You're asking me to stick my neck in a noose. Now, let me reassure you on that point. If you follow my directions, no harm will come to you. Until I get back. Until you get back. Or if you're followed or you try to bring help. Well, there's one thing I can say for you. Don't leave any doubt in a man's mind. Where do I go and what time do I leave? How fast can you get to Salem and back? Depends on how I travel. I have a horse here. He's strong and he's fast. Say about four hours each way. All right, you have to be there by midnight and back here by dawn. That's kind of 